So I talked about um, today's topic in the last video. Uh, and so we were going to talk about uh, touch style um, instruments and some touch style artists today. Uh, so to start with, uh, I'll kind of reiterate some stuff I talked about in the last video, which is kind of how touch style instruments got started. And the idea is that when people got started amplifying um, guitars, um, you could, because of the amplification, you could do things that, that you wouldn't normally be able to do with a guitar. Um, and one of the things you can do is play on the neck. And, and this started really early. Um, and you could play on the neck and uh, you would be able to get notes out of the neck and not just have to pick at the pick or, or pluck with your finger uh, at the, at, at, you know, at, near the bridge of the guitar. So you could actually do it. And the advantage, one advantage at least of this, um, there's, there's some back and forth on this about, about how good of a technique this is, I guess. But one advantage is that you can use both hands independently and you don't have to pluck with one hand and fret with the other hand. So for what that's worth. And, and um, this kind of got extended and at some point um, some people started building instruments that some different people started building instruments that were specifically meant to be played that way rather than simply uh, doing it as sort of like a hack. You know, like you would sort of over amplify your guitar and you would do it uh, but that wasn't really what the guitar was meant for. Well, people built instruments where it was meant to be played at the neck. And um, there are some people that we could mention that, that did other versions of it, but I think probably the first person uh, to sort of really sort of do a, an instrument like that was John Emmett Chapman uh, and the Chapman stick. And uh, the Chapman stick, uh, I mean, there's a lot of skepticism about touch instruments, uh, even today. Um, and I think, you know, I can understand why, but I also think that there's, there's been some really good um, music that's come out of uh, touch style um, in, uh, instrumentalists and, and things. And so you have to really think about, um, it's an electronic instrument and it, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it couldn't exist without significant electronics. Uh, and, and then also, you know, it's, it's an instrument that's radical and it's new and no one knows exactly what to make of it yet. I guess is kind of the thing, but but I think there's some really good stuff going on. Another thing to mention, uh, I guess real quick, is that some uh, some uh, artists that are uh, electric guitarists have made pretty extensive use out of tapping. If you think of um, Eddie Van Halen is one, did a lot of stuff on the neck. Uh, Angus Young of ACDC, if you think of like the opening of Thunderstruck, that's all tapped out. Uh, so... I mean, it's not like that's the only the only thing that's going on is touch style, touch style instruments, but there's definitely that. Uh, that's definitely one of the things. So the first artist, I guess I would mention, now that we're sort of done with the introduction, uh, is probably Tony Levin. Tony Levin, I think if we if we kind of get down to it, is primary his primary instrument is bass, uh, but he uh, uses the Chapman stick pretty extensively. He does it uh, in several groups. One of them is called stick men. So the joke of stick men is you have uh, a guy on, on, a, on a touch style instrument named Marcus Reuter, uh, currently the current lineup, and then Tony Levin on Chapman stick, and then and then the, the drummer who plays you know with sticks. So you have the stick men, they're all playing sticks. That's kind of the deal. And um, and that's and you can find uh, Stickman uh, recordings on i some, in some cases on iTunes, but Bandcamp is actually a really good place because um, some of these artists are supporting Bandcamp as sort of an alternative to uh, uh, iTunes and other mainstream uh, uh, music services. So I just started using Bandcamp like two weeks ago, and I have to say that I'm really impressed with with the independent music going on there. I really think it's really cool, um, and in fact, there's an awful lot of stuff that, uh, available for free, even if you don't buy. Uh, so you can't do everything uh, as a free service. There's the the catalog for for free music is smaller, but it's certainly uh, not an app where if you don't buy something, you can't use it. So it's definitely worth thinking about. 
for anybody who's into music and likes music swag. I made a joke about this on my <laughs> Facebook. Uh, and if you like music swag like I do, this is kind of a cool thing. So yeah, the Stickman and Tony Levin, one of the things about Tony Levin is he was one of the first major artists to, to adopt a Chapman stick. And I think per, really today remains one of the only major artists that we think of when we think of Chapman stick. Um, I think the, the song is from Discipline, which is one of my favorite King Crimson records. And the, the song for Chapman stick is Elephant Talk because of the, there's a riff that he or like a like a lick that he plays where and then he uses a double stop just like two notes at the same time is what that means and he bends it really he like bends it slides it really heavy and stuff and people love that that lick and so um, that's that's something to check out um, and I guess you know let's see it's you know Marcus Reuter who I mentioned already who's in the Stickman uh, plays a touch style instrument called the touch guitar that's built it was originally built by Ed Reynolds but I guess now that there's a uh, sort of a company that's based in uh, Austria and Berlin uh, and uh, and they do a lot of work um, building these instruments and there's a number of artists in their catalog that, that play it and uh, a lot of them are European but uh, Mark Schroeder lives in Berlin he's based in Berlin so um, I don't know, like, like in terms of Marcus Reuter, um, his stuff tends to be very intellectual and and sometimes a little hard to to get into. I love, I I like it. I think it's really good. Uh, the one I guess that that impresses me the most, and it's certainly a um, it's a it's a mathematical music experiment essentially, and it's called Falling for Ascension. Uh, there's another one I'll mention too, in, a, in a, once I get done talking about this one. But the the falling for ascension uh, is like algorithmic music. So there's like a process, and it plays out over the course of the, the period of the composition. The other one I was going to mention is uh, one he did with a uh, ambient musician named Zero Ohms, which is called. Uh, it, I'm going to try to remember this. It's a long title. It's the sun is just the sun, but the stars they call the heavens. And uh, that that particular ambient piece is really really cool. Like I really like that. And he's done other stuff. He's recently done some uh, work with a piano player, uh, which is very good. Uh, and so there's some stuff worth checking out uh, uh, in his catalog. Um, again, Bandcamp is a really good place for his work. Uh, and then Trey Gunn is another one. Trey Gunn uh, has done. Um, over the years some really really innovative music uh, and he's played with King Crimson uh, Marcus Reuter has played with a lot of the members of King Crimson and done some stuff with that uh, but the uh, Trey Gunn uh, Trey Gunn's work uh, is I think char characteristically very rhythmic um, in some cases he's very almost like metal or like like punk rock almost like uh, the case of like TU which was you uh, a duo between him and Pat Mastelato. Uh, there's like a, a lot of really, really heavy sounds. Um, the the record I would recommend is a collection. There's two collections that are good. Uh, one is called uh, I'll Tell What I Saw, which is a more recent collection, and the older one is called Untune the Sky, which is the one I think I would recommend the most. I really like Untune the Sky as a collection. Uh, and he also did a real interesting uh, project with a uh, synthesizer wizard whose name escapes me at the moment but it's called Quodia and it was like a story based piece and then there was uh, all this music that takes place behind the story and it's this it's told in very simple language and it's a little bit hard to grasp when you first hear it Quodia is kind of unusual uh, but after having heard the piece now you know a number of times over the past few years I happen to really like it I I think it's really innovative. I think it's um, kind of the future music type thing. It's heavily composed, so it's 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 a very interesting piece. I I definitely recommend it. Um, I I think that's it's called the Arrow. It's, the, it's Quodia is the name of the like the, the little group or whatever, and, and the Arrow is the name of the uh, the composition. So that's worth checking out. Um, there are other 
players out there. Um, and I think, you know, it's worth looking at some of the uh, websites and stuff on Touch Guitar and trying out people who are less well known. Um, Bandcamp, as I said again, uh, is, is a good place to check those things out. That's a good, uh, and I think that's a good resource. But I think that a good thing to talk about with Touch Guitar is that, as I mentioned, it's a radical instrument, it's new. Not every, it's people are skeptical about it, understandably, I guess. But also, there's a, a lot of really interesting music that's come out of it. And the idea behind the instrument is that a lot of the things that you could do with a regular guitar, if not all of them, can be done with the touch style instrument, but then there's other things that you can do with it that you can't do with the guitar. So the idea would to really be to, to replace guitar. And then another thing that's happened is the, the instrument has a, instruments, I should say, because there's different ones, but the instruments usually have a really extended bass range. So a lot of people will do what Tony Levin does and play bass with it. Uh, and so you get a lot of, uh, of that stuff. Another thing uh, that comes to mind, since I have a couple minutes, uh, is uh, Tim Alexander from Primus, sort of back in the 90s, had a, had a, uh, a he played with a Chapman stick player on a, uh, on a uh, couple of records called, and uh, the name of the group was Laundry. Um, the first one out of that group called Black Tongue is really good, and then it's hard to find. It's not the easiest record to, to, to pick up on uh, or to, to pick up. But I think the, uh, the one uh, that came later, which was called Motivator, I think, uh, that one's a little bit easier to find on the services today. So that's worth checking out. Um, you know, it, it's, I think they're really interesting instruments. I'm interested uh, for what it's worth, again, uh, I'm interested in extended range instrument, extended range instruments, and I've looked at um, over the past couple of years, over the past year or so, I've looked at a lot of seven string guitars and baritone guitars, and uh, and I've looked at uh, I've done a lot of looking around at I've, uh, uh, instruments of that type, uh, fan fret instruments and, and stuff, things that are meant to be tuned into lower ranges, and um, and so I've gotten interested in in a variety of different touch style instruments looking at you know inst because of their tunings more or less uh, and and I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's a really interesting um, it, it's progressive music it's it, it's I think it's a really interesting step forward I think it could be a really great thing uh, there are people out there trying it uh, and there are people out there who are dedicating themselves to the instruments uh, and to different versions of the instruments. So, I mean, I, I guess it, it just it just follows that you know it, it it depends on really the musicians to make something out of it. Um, and it certainly hasn't taken over the world. Uh, it certainly hasn't become like the instrument for like all of all time or anything. And it's certainly more people are playing guitar and at this point uh, a lot of obviously things have been replaced so much by synthesizers anyway that not, not even that many people are playing guitar maybe so you know you have to think about stuff like that but you know I I don't know that I uh, I don't know that I know the answer to all those all those things but it certainly interests me uh, and I think the music is worth checking out. So I thought I would do this topic. As I said, I'm uh, going to have to uh, revisit some topics probably. Uh, and I'm going to have to think about how I want to do that. And I'm going to have to organize a little bit better. So anyway, uh, this, that's the end of this one. And I will be back in a couple days or so.